here with EFC Women's Flyweight Champion Amanda Lino. Amanda, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. So I think for those that don't know, just tell us a bit about uh, your school career and your younger days as, as Amanda Lino. Look, I've obviously, I've been telling the story of, of me going through a, like a bag patch in, in my life and I obviously got myself into a little bit of trouble getting into fights and that would lead, lead me to, to obviously get into MMA. Um, fitness purpose as well, you know, I picked up a little bit of weight, I wanted to lose it, challenging myself with something different, so I was drawn to MMA at the time because my brother and my friends were doing it. However, um, you know, as a female, my mom, you know, we sat down the other day and she told me the story about how I was always pushing limits and even when I was in school days. So it basically started and it, it triggered a couple of stories for me when um, I used to play rugby and be on the cricket field with all the guys because back then we didn't have girls cricket teams and we didn't have, you know, girls rugby teams. Um, and I, so every day I spent in my dress running around with the boys playing rugby and playing cricket. And I used to bug the coach all the time and I'd be like, come on, you know, I want to start a female team. And eventually he got so sick of me being in the guy's like, face all the time, playing rugby with them. He was like, okay, I'm going to give you the opportunity to start a, a female team. So anyway, I ended up fast forwarding. We ended up starting a girls cricket team and a girls rugby team. And I think from, from a very young age, I've always been, you know, I haven't really excluded myself from, you know, boys sports and girls sports. And, you know, I was always wanting to push myself and challenge myself and, in you know, teachers would always say, you know, you're a girl, you can't be playing rugby and cricket. But I was always like, you know, I'm not going to see any limits. You know, I want to push myself and, and, and play those sports. And I think that kind of transcended into my MMA days when they were like, you know, MMA is for, for males and it's a male-dominated sport. And I was like, but it doesn't have to be. To me, it's not. So I think from a young age, I've always pushed the limits. And it obviously transcended into to my later stages in, in life which now led to MMA going, being the first female champion, you know, I've always, always wanted to push the boundaries and it's, you know, I've carried that through my whole life and, you know, being the first female champion, you know, obviously it was something that I always wanted to do and, you know, I didn't see any limits and no one could ever tell me you can't do something and I'm here to prove that I can do just, just as much as the boys can do and, and the men, I suppose now. And do you feel like there's been some vindication since you've won that belt to show that kind of female MMA is on the same level as what male MMA is at the moment? Yeah, I think, you know, there's always going to be those, those people that, you know, they have their opinion and they, you know, they're welcome to have their opinions. You know, some people are going to say that women don't belong in the cage and by all means they can think that. But I just make sure that every time I step into the cage, you know, I prove that women are, are just as tough and, and they belong in the cage just as much as everyone else does. So, you know, that's what I'm here to prove and I think I've done a, a good job of proving it. So everyone obviously sees you in the cage, we see the fighter persona, we see the mad dog, but tell us about what you do when you're not training, fighting, <laughs> all of those things. Yeah, look, I think we all have our, our, our different personalities and our, you know, that's purely my mad dog persona that comes out on, on, the, on fight night. Um, you know, myself and Rod run a, a gym, K Fitness in Belito, so a lot of my time is spent in the gym. You know, um, MMA is not just, it's not a hobby, it's my lifestyle. So I spend a lot of time training, um, with Rodney and, and training up new upcoming fighters, you know, hoping to get another female fighter in the gym and you know, just enjoying my life overall as a as an MMA fighter and, and a personal trainer on a day-to-day -day basis. And give us your, your best moments so far in, in your MMA journey. I've had a lot of, of best moments and you know what, for me, I, I can tell you best moments in the cage and then outside of the cage because you know, as much as it's it's awesome reaching your goals, the journey up to it is, is the most enjoyable part. And I think it took me a long time to realize, you know, that you have to enjoy every moment. And the team that I have behind me, you know, my coaches Dallas and, and Rodney are phenomenal. And, you know, the boys that are behind me, some of them take off work to, to go through camp with me. So the journey itself is, that is the most memorable part. And I think even though it's the toughest part of, of your camp, um, it's the most meaningful for me because to know that those people are around you to to help you reach a goal you know we often say that it is mma is also a team sport you know even though i get into the cage on my own it's, it's it is a team sport and we all put in hard hours towards it but definitely the armbar moment you know winning by armbar didn't expect it i was definitely i, I more so going with ground and pound but when that arm came and that opportunity was there i mean yeah there's there's no words to explain so that's definitely it has to be one of my biggest and uh proudest moments but ending by submission and then everyone knows your EFC journey everyone knows what you've done there and seen yeah. you win the belt but not many people know that you actually competed at the amateur world champs yeah. as well tell us what that experience was like 
as an amateur you don't really train um you know every day you train like maybe every second day so it it, it wasn't really a career basis at the stage you know it was something that we did as because we loved it so it was part-time um, and then you get taken out of your country with no team behind you you know on your own in a country where the sport has developed I mean, in south africa at the time yes it's 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 grown hugely now but at that time when i went over it was tiny um you know we didn't even have the professional female circuit at the time um so it, it was our opening it was it was a hell of a scary experience but it was something that i think was that was a moment that changed for me um transitioning from is this something that i want to do as a hobby as opposed to something i want to make a career out of um, and it was, I mean, great to see so many different kind of fighters over there, you know, it opens up your, your eyes going over there. And then just some uh, quick fire questions just to, to, get, to get to know Amanda a little bit better. So I'm going to fire about five or six, just to answer the first thing that comes to mind. Okay. Favorite restaurant? Mama G's. Favorite meal? Oh, spaghetti bolognese. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not allowed to eat it often, but it is my favorite. <laughs> favorite car? Oh man, I love Bucky. So the old Corsa Bucky is actually one of my favorites, yeah. Favorite song? Favorite song oh, is my walkout song Eminem Survival. Yeah. Yeah. You collected something pretty special yesterday at uh, at EFC. Let, 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 let's have a look. Look how beautiful that is. Thanks, Amanda. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.